Hey there! Welcome to this sofa session. Today, as you can see, our sofa is a little bit different. This is due to the fact that we are in Switzerland, at my place in Bern. So, welcome everybody! This week, we have studied two important structural models of default. Merton's model and the KMV1. For what concerns uh, the KMV model, we have said that this model can be seen as a derivation of Merton's model. Now, a question that we can ask when dealing with this type of models is the following. Are these models effective in studying, in predicting the probability of default of a company? Uh, in other words, are these models useful in practice? Now, for what concerns uh, Merton's model, we can say that this model is rarely used in practice. It is surely one of the most influential theoretical models in the literature. It is still a benchmark for scholars and practitioners from a theoretical point of view, but its practical use is limited, uh, is constrained by its own flows. For example, think about the liability structure which is assumed by Merton's model. Uh, now, consider every small company out there, even the smallest one, say an ice cream shop. Okay, that ice cream shop will have a liability structure which is far more complex than uh, simple zero coupon bond. Moreover, uh, Merton's model does not take into account uh, the dependence among defaults. Uh, for example, assume you're a company and assume that one of your major suppliers or clients defaults. Surely, you can expect that this will have an impact on your business. And obviously, this will have an impact on your probability of defaulting. Or consider the economy as a whole and imagine that the number of defaulting company uh, is increasing because, for example, we are during a crisis. Now, what we can expect is that we will observe some sort of credit crunch and this will surely impact the probability of default of the surviving companies, that is to say, the companies that are still on the market. Uh, finally, there is a criticism which is in common uh, with all structural models of default, and Merton's model is the prototype we have seen. Uh, scholars and practitioners argue that probably the threshold mechanism which is behind Merton's model and in general structural models of default uh, may be too naive, too simple to describe, to capture the complexity which is behind an event like a default. Uh, we all agree on the fact that deteriorating assets uh, surely have an effect, an impact on the probability of default of a company because of problems of self-financing or the difficulties of accessing credit from banks. But we all know that this is just one of the possible causes of default. So the deterioration of assets is just one of the possible causes of default. We can expect other causes for a, such a complex event as default, such as, for, such as, for example, shocks from the supply side. Now, if we consider the KMV model, we can surely say that uh, this model improves Merton's model, but for example, by substituting the liability structure and assuming a more uh, plausible, a more realistic structure, or by substituting the Gaussian distribution with an empirically estimated distribution that should guarantee a better treatment of extremes and real-life events. Uh, Nevertheless, scholars say that uh, the approach 
used by Moody's KMV is probably not sufficient to really capture real life risk. Now, without entering into uh, the discussion about risk neutral probabilities, without giving too much details, what we can say is that the KMV model relies on some assumptions that are perfectly okay from a purely financial mathematics point of view, but they may be not the best assumption from a real life point of view. Uh, nevertheless, if we consider empirical studies about the efficacy of the KMV model, what we find is that these studies support the idea that the KMV model is able to satisfactorily uh, predict the probability of default of companies using the EDF for what concerns the one-year time horizon. And we know that the EDF is defined as the probability that a company will default within one year according to the KMV methodology. Uh, but you can also imagine that Moody's KMV provides other estimates of the probability of default using the same methodology but for different time horizons, such as, for example, 18 months, 2 years, 3 years, and so on. Okay, in these cases, the performances of the KMV model are not that good. So it appears that the one year time horizon is actually the best time span for the KMV model. Okay, so see you next week and goodbye.